In today's video, we're going to be taking a trip down history between the year 2000 and 2001. And we'll be looking at the true crime story of Jericho Mwamama, the most dangerous armed robber in Igbo history. How he became this dreaded criminal, his gruesome crimes, how he was eventually apprehended, also how he got the most gruesome execution in Nigeria's history. So sit back and relax, grab a drink, a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, whatever, and let's jump right into it. But before we do, subscribe to this channel if you're not already, turn on the notification bell to get notified anytime I post a new video. Give this video a thumbs up and let's jump right into today's true crime story. To many Nigerians, the name Derek Mwamama represents chilling terror. His real name is Okudili Ndiwe. He terrorized Anambra state in the southeastern part of Nigeria from 2000 until he was apprehended by the Bakasi boys in 2001. Derek started off as a street urchin in Onicha. He then graduated to a pickpocket and then a dreaded criminal to the extent that just the mere mention of his name sent shivers down the spines of every single human being in the entire southeast region of nigeria he was reported to have killed 25 policemen and at least 100 civilians during his time of just 22 years old he was only 22 years old guys now how did Derek Mwamama become this dreaded criminal long before Derek Mwamama became famous for his exploits in the city of Onicha the entire Anambra state was under the control of another ruthless merciless and cold-blooded armed robber known as Chiejina under the reign of Chiejina and his gang all residents of Onicha were living in fear a policeman once told a horrifying story about Chiejina he said that on the 16th of February 1999, two days after the Valentine celebration, Chejina got a tip off about a family in Onisha that was in possession of a large sum of money. So he went to Onisha hoping to rob the family. But unfortunately for him, the husband did not come home with the money. He had gone to the bank to deposit the money before going home. Chejina became so enraged that he grabbed the man's four-month-old son. He threatened to throw the baby from a three-story building if he was not paid. And when the man and his wife were not forthcoming with his demand, he flung the baby from the three-story building and shot the man twice in the head. Yes, he was that ruthless. Like, I would like to think that even the most hardened criminal would have a little bit of sympathy, you know, for a little baby, a four-month-old baby at like that. This man is just so heartless. Reports have it that he forced families to have in front of him for his own amusement. He forced fathers to sleep with their daughters and mothers to sleep with their sons. And of course, refusal meant death. Jericho and Chejina were very good friends at that time and also colleagues in the armed robbery business, a friendship that started during the famous Umuleri stroke Aguleri conflict. But Jericho was not based in Onicha then, he was based in Abuja, a federal capital territory, and only visited the East from time to time to carry out his robbery operations. It was said that Jericho would set out for his robbery operations and that he spared no one. He left dead bodies in his wake, including policemen and his defenseless victims. He would then return to his hideout with his loot, enjoying so much power, luxury, and comfort. But according to reports, things started to take a turn in November 1999, when the then Obi of Onicha, His Royal Highness Obi of Fala Okagwe, rallied Onicha Ado youth to help curb the ever rising crime in the city to enable indigents who ran away to return for the Christmas celebration of that year. Now, if you're a Nigerian or you know anything about Nigerians, right? So during the Ember months, during the festive period, the crime rates in the country usually skyrockets. Probably because a lot of those criminals are looking for money to spend the festive period, right? So during that period, a lot of the indigents left that city because it was not safe. So the Ado youths then sat together with some of the notorious armed robbers to know how to settle them and have peace return to the city of Onicha. Now by settling them, it means giving them money basically to step down, you know, and stop terrorizing the people of Anambra state, which is very crazy. Imagine paying criminals to stop robbing people. It just goes to show that these criminals were even above the law, right? Like even the police cannot hold them down, nothing can. So at this point, they're being bribed to basically leave people alone. It was said that Chejina and Derico were also present in the meeting. Now, after the meeting, it is presumed that Derico agreed to comply with them, but Chejina, on the other hand, 
refused to step down so basically Chieji now was like no way i'm going to stop rubbing i'm going to keep rubbing i'm going to keep terrorizing people he literally did not want to stop even when they came together to settle them it was like no way i'm going to keep doing this and there's nothing you guys can do about it like the nerve in fact it was said he attacked some of the members of the ado youth and became even more ruthless in the entire state so they literally triggered him and he started wreaking even more havoc the people came to the realization that um, Chie Jine is like out of control. There's no way we can control him. Even his friend is trying to comply, but he's not. So they decided to seek the help of his friend, Derrico. But it didn't yield much results, so they decided to give him a taste of his own medicine. Now, this is what they did. They teamed up with Derrico and some of the special police officers to raid Chie Jina and his gang. The operation was not totally successful because Chie Jina was not present at the time, but members of his gang were rounded up and sent to the Central State Police Station in Onicha. When Chie Jina learned what happened, he felt betrayed by his friend Derrico, and without thinking about the consequences, he called on his right-hand man, who also doubled as his bike man. The guy's name is Amobi, so he told the guy to take him straight to Derrico's parents' house. On getting there, he met Derrico's father and immediately he fired several bullets and shot the man dead right on the spot. Derrico heard about this and set out for revenge. Immediately, he ran into Chiejina close to a church in Onicha and he fired several shots at Chiejina who then fell into a gutter. Derrico proceeds to put Chiejina into a wheelbarrow and wheeled him to the station. An unconfirmed report claimed that Chiejina did not die on the spot, that while on the wheelbarrow, he begged Derrico to kill him and not take him to the police station alive. Derrico then obliged him and fired one final shot to end the evil reign of one of Nigeria's most ruthless criminals. On getting to the police station, officers were dancing and celebrating. They lifted Jericho up as their hero and celebrated him as the king of the town. Little did they know that they just crowned a more ruthless criminal that would wreak havoc in Onicha. After the death of Chiejina, Jericho became the most feared, pitiless criminal in the state. His reign was one of the darkest periods in Anambra state. Even the Everons were not spared. At some point, Derrico used the town of Umuleri as his hideout. Then from there, he would issue threatening messages to the police that they would pay for killing members of his gang. He also maintained bases in other towns like Agbo, Benin, and Asaba. Even the traders in Onicha could not display their wares in peace. Many slept with one eye open. Derrico robbed commercial banks and cattered away with millions of Naira. It even became dangerous for travelers to pass through the state for fear of being robbed, kidnapped, or killed. Derrico was described as the personification of terror from Nnewi to Mpo, down to Onicha, up to Asaba, from the villages in Umuleri to towns in Ihiala, the old and the young, men, women, children, everyone were terrified at the mere whisper of Derrico Umuamama. He took over people's lands, businesses, wives, and all his gang members, including members of his family, got away with anything because they were related to him. At that time, he was said to be invincible and could not be arrested. He was basically above the law at this point. Now, according to reports, Derrick Omuamama killed over 200 people, including 25 police officers whose life he mercilessly wasted. He was a master of countless bus robberies and does not hesitate before firing bullets into the beating hearts of his helpless victims. And after his successful raids, he would boast and declare himself invincible. Derrico seemed to have placed a lot of faith and confidence in the charms prepared for him by the traditional witch doctors. The then governor of Anambra state of Nochimuke Mbadeniju became worried about the reign of terror perpetrated by Derrico Mwamama as well as the then president of Nigeria, President Olusegun Obasanjo, who was enraged that the criminal was left to unleash terror in that part of Nigeria without the fear of law or anybody. The police were helpless and had lost many men to the dreaded bandits. They were like, we don't know what to do. They could not fathom a way to bring Derrico and his gangs to justice. So everyone had added up to that point. So at that point, they were desperate. On May 2001, the Anambra State Police Command launched the operation Derrico, which was aimed at 
capturing Jericho and his gang members at all costs, any cost at all. The police managed to arrest some of Jericho's men, but he was still at large. He kept operating with reckless abandon, robbing, killing, and kidnapping innocent Nigerians. In December 2000, Jericho and his gang committed the worst crime known to man to date. They attacked a 59-seater luxurious bus fueled to the brim at the popular Upper Iweka Omicha. The bus was about to leave for Lagos. Now, after robbing every single person in the bus, they decided to kill everybody on board, including women and children. And mercilessly, Derrico gave the orders and his men shot all the passengers execution style and left them for dead. Only four people survived that day. After that horrible incident, the then governor of Anambra state, Chimwoke Mbadimiju, did not have any choice but to bring in the dreaded Bakasi boys to help save the state. If you know anything about the Bakasi boys, if you've heard about them or you've read about them or, you, or you've watched a movie about them, you know that they do not play around, okay? They are the same level with Derrico when it comes to being merciless, you know, being gruesome in their dealings, if you know what I mean. So, yeah, they were definitely the best option in this case. On Tuesday, July 3rd, 2001, Derrico was on a bus going from Agbo to Onicha. And on getting to the Onicha axis, the dreaded Bakasi boys stopped the bus. Sensing danger, Jericho tried to escape. He jumped the window, but before he could make the move, after jumping out, the nearest Bakasi member on the scene chopped off his left ear. And that was how the dreadest and ruthless crime lord was captured. And for a man who thought he was above the law, he thought he was invincible, and he thought he could not be captured, it was funny how he started crying and pleading for his life. He was taken to Bromeo Hospital for treatment because he was bleeding profusely. When news of his capture broke, every single human, not only in Anambra State alone, but also in Nigeria, celebrated what would come to be known as the end of terror. Now, if you know anything about the Bakasi boys, you know that they have a terrible, blood-chilling reputation on how they deal with their suspects or victims. So they were definitely the best solution to dealing with Derrico. On the 9th of July 2001, six days after Derrico was captured, the Bakasi boys did to him what many had predicted. Chanting war songs, they drove in their convoy around the town and ended at the Ochanja Market Junction along the popular Upper Iweka Road in Onicha. As their buses came to a stop, people were shouting with excitement. Many knew the fate that would befall Derrico, so they all trooped to the scene to witness the final judgment on him. Derrico was dragged out from the bus, looking injured and severely beaten. He was in obvious pain, but no one seemed to care. <laughs> really. The Bakasi boys were still chanting war songs and were egged on by the enchanted crowd. One of the commanders of the Bakasi boys named Okompi, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, addressed the crowd, telling them they were in the state not for politics but to fight crime. He handed over the microphone to the now Derrico who, like a coward, began begging for his life to be spared. He attempted to prove that he was innocent. And here is what he said. My name is Odi, alias Derrico, alias Mama. I appeal to you, the people of Anambra State. Please don't kill me. I don't like evil. It was when I killed Chieji now that people thought I am a strong guy. You know, I trust Bakasi boys. They are strong. Please, mercy for me. Nobody can identify me as having robbed him. Please just believe that I am not a strong guy. He further confessed that while he was on the run, he was sheltered by a member of the National Assembly in Abuja. He also confessed that he had two other powerful protectors, one being a member of the Anambra State House of Assembly, while the other was the chairman of a local government. Derrico's execution was one of the most gruesome displays of public executions in Nigeria. He was beheaded and his body was cut up into sizable chunks. The Bakasi boys did not stop there. They proceeded to drench his remains with fuel and set his remains on fire. It was said that the crowd rejoiced and jubilated. It was as if a festival of some sort was going on. Derrico's gruesome execution was a clear warning to any criminal bent on making life difficult for the people of Anambra. After Derrico's death, a lot of Nollywood movies were produced about him, such as Isakaba, End of the Road, Derrico Mwamama, and many more.